Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. At age 40, Franz Kafka, who never married and had no children, 
walked through a park in Berlin where he met a girl who was crying because she had lost her favorite doll. She and Kafka searched for the doll unsuccessfully. Kafka told her to meet him there the next day and they would come back to look for her. The next day, when they had not found the doll, Kafka gave the girl a letter written by the doll saying, please don't cry. I took a trip around the world. I will write to you about my adventures. Thus began a story that would continue until the end of Kafka's life. During their meetings, Kafka read the letters of the doll, carefully written with adventures and conversations that the girl found adorable. Finally, Kafka brought back the doll he had bought that had returned to Berlin. When he gave it to the little girl, she said, it doesn't look like my doll at all. Kafka handed her another letter in which the doll wrote, my travels have changed me. The little girl hugged the new doll and happily brought her home. A year later, Kafka died. Many years later, the now adult girl found a letter inside the doll. In the tiny letter signed by Kafka, it was written, everything you love will probably be lost, but in the end, love will return it another way. In a few modest truths, John Buchanan wrote about writer John Krakauer, adding a section of author's remarks to his book, Into the Wild. He concludes with this reflection so striking that Buchanan wrote it down and saved it for a Sunday like this one. I borrowed it for today. I don't know what God is, Krakauer wrote, or what God had in mind when the universe was set in motion. In fact, I don't know if God even exists. If I remain in the dark about our purpose here and the meaning of eternity, I have nevertheless arrived at an understanding of a few more modest truths. Most of us fear death. Most of us yearn to comprehend how we got here and why, which is to say most of us yearn to know the love of our Creator. And we will no doubt feel that ache, most of us, for as long as we happen to be alive. In the fourth century, Augustine of Hippo wrote, Thou madest us for thyself, and our heart is restless until it repose in thee. The longing to know God, the yearning for what John Krakauer described as the love of our Creator, all of that is an essential part of our humanity. Today's Gospel describes the return of the disciples from their first ministry tour, their apostleship inaugural. Euphoric and drained, they have stories to share, exciting stories of healings and exorcisms and successful evangelistic campaigns. Jesus can tell that there were some difficult situations too. It wasn't just a great victory tour. There were likely stories when everything didn't go as expected, stories of failure and rejection, perhaps, stories of doubt, difficult stories they need to process privately with their teacher. Whatever the case, Jesus sees that the disciples need a break. They're tired, overstimulated, underfed, and in significant need of solitude. He knows what that feels like. Jesus wisely says to his disciples, come away to a deserted place and rest a while. And here Mark adds an important detail. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure to eat. There is both compassion and longing in those words. Jesus wants to provide a time of rest and recuperation for, for his friends, but he's weary himself, and the longing is his own. There is a message for us here. Pay more attention to the off-the-cuff passages in the Gospels, those little transition verses which often precede or follow the main events of Jesus' life story. Passages such as, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Or the next day as they were leaving Bethany, 
Jesus was hungry, or Jesus was in the back of the boat, sleeping. In these verses, we find essential glimpses of Jesus' human life, his need to go away, his desire for solitary prayer, his bodily hunger, his sleepiness, his inclination to withdraw. These glimpses take nothing away from Jesus' divinity. They enhance it, making it richer and all the more mysterious. They remind me that the incarnate Son of God, God of the whole universe, hungers, sleeps, eats, rests, withdraws, and grieves. In all of these mundane but crucial ways, Jesus is fully human, just like us. Of course, this lesson isn't new. It runs through scripture from its earliest pages. In Genesis, God rested on the seventh day and called the Sabbath holy. Honoring this is no small feat in our 21st century lives, where our worth is measured in profits gained or advantages lost. Rest is incidental after every chore is done. Rest never comes naturally for me. I forget about it. I resist it. There is always some task or deadline calling my name. To remember that God rested, that Jesus rested, is both astonishing and humbling. How dare I claim not to need a break when Jesus himself took one? The Sabbath is the only thing in creation account that God called holy. I would do well to pay attention. So would we all. Back to the Gospel. Jesus is also like us in that sometimes his best laid plans to find rest get superseded by circumstances. According to Mark, Jesus' retreat by boat idea fails. The crowds anticipate his plan and follow on foot. By the time he and his disciples reach their destination, the crowds are waiting, and the quiet sanctuary Jesus seeks is nowhere to be found. He looks at the crowd and has compassion. The agenda is set aside instantaneously. The disciples see an unwanted, unwelcome interruption. Jesus sees lost sheep needing a shepherd. Compassion trumps the disciples' needs, their exhaustion, and his own. I love a vignette Henry Nouwen told about himself when he first came to this country to teach at Notre Dame. Nouwen said he was surprised at the way American professors kept their office doors open. Aren't you constantly interrupted, he asked a colleague. How do you get any work done? His colleague responded, Henry, your interruptions are your work. A bit of truth relevant for all busy people. Now there are so many people crowding around him that Jesus and the disciples get in the boat and try again, this time on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And there on the other side, another crowd waiting. There is a sense of urgency now. People from the entire region rush to bring their sick to him. In fact, wherever he went, people rushed to see him. Even in marketplaces, they laid their sick at his feet and begged simply to touch the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. The people in these stories are not passive, sitting around waiting for something to happen. They run ahead of him. They anticipate where he's going and get there first. They are insistent. They push and shove to get close enough to touch him. They are not very orderly. It is healing to know that there is one who cares, a God of compassion, it is not just an interesting idea. It is a healing reality to get close to Jesus, to reach out and touch the fringe of his cloak. When the chips are down, when life takes an unexpected turn, the job you have counted on to provide for your future and to give you a sense of identity comes to an end. It is healing to know about the one who knows and cares. When the test results come back and the news is bad, and you face surgery or chemo, and you are suddenly and acutely aware of your mortality, it is quietly and powerfully healing 
to know that you are not in this alone, that there is one who is with you and will be with you. Whenever the bottom falls out of your life, as it does sooner or later for all of us, we are held in the arms of our living, loving, healing, and life-giving God, our hope-generating and strength-producing God, whose very being is compassion. It is the essence of your humanity and mine to yearn for that God, to ache to know the love of our Creator. And so maybe the best news in all the world is in this little story, in two single sentences. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and had compassion for them. And they begged simply to touch the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for all our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this congregation, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just, power and, for the just and proper use of your creation, for all the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Ken, Nettie, and Wendell, our assisting bishops, and all bishops, for Darren, Heather, and Noel, our priest, Gary, our deacon, and the ministry of all the baptized, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we also pray for those whose needs are closely linked with ours and for those who suffer from any sickness, grief, or distress, especially those on our parish prayer list, including Aggie, Elle, Gloria, John, Mandy, Mike, Paula, Rosemary, Sandy, Susan, Ted, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders, and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, and especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus pandemic, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. 
I invite you to name your own names and concerns, either offered silently or aloud. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here or abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, Perrin, and Tony, for their safety and the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. We pray for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Let us pray together for our Stephen ministers saying, gracious and loving God, guide our Stephen ministers who continue to step out in faith as they walk the journey with their care receivers Bless the relationships created and strengthen the trust in you that is formed. May our Stephen ministers and leaders feel your presence and be empowered by your spirit, granting them wisdom and courage to do the work you have prepared them to do. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. I invite your own thanksgivings, either offered silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, Together, have mercy on us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, 
to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After, after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come, you are part of the kingdom. Using the prayer adopted by our National Cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion. Physically, as we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who brought order out of chaos, grant you rest. May Christ, who stilled the storm, grant you calm. May the Spirit, who fills all things, grant you peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.